Is it a life sentence? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes marriage in the Quran in a very beautiful way. And amongst his signs, amongst the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, amongst his ayat, is that he had made amongst you, your mates, husbands and wives. Your mates, your ayah. Ya'ni your wife, she is ayah min ayatillah. Your spouse, she is one of the signs of Allah because Allah says in the Quran, Surah Al-Rum, ayah number 21, and amongst his signs, amongst his ayat, is, he is that he had created amongst you, your mates, so that you may dwell in tranquility. And that he has put amongst you love and mercy. <laughs> and then you drink. Love in the air. Halal way. Halal love. And then you bring a date. Sunnah. I'm telling you sunnah. You bring a date. Give a date. And then you eat from the date. At the time of Abu Hanifa, one woman, one guy wanted to divorce his wife. You know, she was climbing the ladder, going up the ladder. He goes, if you go one step up, you're divorced. One step down, you're divorced. So how would you do this, huh? One step up, one step down. Yani, you are divorced. She's smart. She jumped. <laughs> Brothers, be careful, man. Not for anything. Talak, talak, talak. Bismillah alhamdulillah Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Till death do us apart I also call it the ocean of love Bahr al-Hub An ocean of love The relationship between the spouses and how to improve these relationships between the spouses. Today, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to share with you some ingredients on how to improve your relationship with your spouse. So, who's married? Nobody from the sisters raised their hands. Who's married? Hands up if you're married. Who's not married? Oh, I see. <laughs> One last question. Who's happy? Who's married? Who's not married? Who's happy? All right. Alhamdulillah. Bye. So let us start, inshallah ta'ala, with the definition of marriage. What is marriage? Is marriage a word? Is it a sentence? Is it a life sentence? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes marriage in the Quran in a very beautiful way. Allah calls it so beautiful, many beautiful names. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Rum, بَعْدَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجَ لِتَسْكُنُ إِلَيْهَا وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجَ لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And amongst his signs, amongst the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, amongst his ayat, is that he had made amongst you, your mates, husbands and wives, your mates, your ayah, يعني your wife, she is ayah min ayatillah. 
Your spouse, she is one of the signs of Allah because Allah says in the Quran, Surah Rum, ayah number 21, and amongst his signs, amongst his ayat, is, he is that he had created amongst you, your mates, so that you may dwell in tranquility. So that you may dwell in tranquility. And that he has put amongst you love and mercy. Love and mercy. I want to start with love. And I want to start with an amazing, amazing story. You see, when we talk about love, sometimes people think about Romeo, Juliet, Qais, Walayla, Amtar, Abla, all these crazy names. I'm going to mention an amazing story that happened at the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The love of all time. Not about the Prophet, but the daughter of the Prophet. Her name is Zainab. The beginning of this talk would be a little emotional. Because this story is quite emotional. The story of the love of Zainab, the daughter of the, of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and her husband Abu Rabi'ah. All right, Zainab and her husband, Abu Al-As ibn Rabi'ah. Abu Al-As ibn Rabi'ah. So what happened, ladies and gentlemen? Zainab, she became a Muslim. Her husband wasn't a Muslim. He came to her and says, Didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me? She says, it is not only me who became a Muslim. It is me, it is your auntie, it is your best friend, it is your uh, cousin Uthman, your best friend Abu Bakr, your auntie, you know, and myself, would you like to become a Muslim, she says. You see, he says, me, no. I don't want people to say about me that I followed my wife or the religion of my wife and I left the religion of my forefathers. He says, would you, would you understand my wife? He says, would you understand? Would you forgive? She says, if I don't understand you, who would? Allah. If I don't understand you, if I don't excuse you, who would? You are my husband. I will be patient with you. I will be patient with you until Allah shows you the light. And she's been patient with him. For six years, living with Abu Al-As, came the Hijrah, came the migration from Mecca to Medina. She went to the Prophet Muhammad and she says, Oh Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, oh my father, would you allow me to stay with my husband in Mecca? The time, the ruling at the time, it was still permissible to marry a non-Muslim. It was not prohibited yet. The Prophet said, sure, you want to stay with your husband, stay with your husband. She stayed with her husband in Mecca. The Prophet migrated to Medina. Came the battle of Badr, the first battle. Abu Al-As decided to go and fight against his father-in-law, against the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he goes and his wife stayed. The Muslims won the battle. Abu Al-As got caught as a prisoner. Zainab, she goes. What happened to my husband? What happened to my husband? They said he was caught as a prisoner. And then she had to send for a ransom to free her husband. What did she send? Uh, she sent a necklace given to her by her mother Khadija, the beloved 
wife of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. She sent that necklace with Abu al-As's brother. So the pro he goes to the Prophet sallam, and then he says, Oh Muhammad, I've got a ransom to free Abu al-As. The Prophet opens this bag and then he found the necklace. The necklace which reminded him of his beloved wife, Khadija. Once he saw the necklace, the Prophet started crying. Who does this belong to? It belongs to Zainab. Zainab sent it so that you can take it as ransom and free her husband. And then the Prophet says, Ayyuhan Nas, Hada Sihri, O people, he is my son-in-law. This is my son-in-law. Ma wajadtu minhu illa khayra. I know nothing bad about him. He's been a good son-in-law to me. Would you free him? Now the Prophet is asking the companions, would you set him free? Would you set him free? They said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. We'll set him free. We'll let him go. So he was set free. And then the Prophet, he took that necklace. And then he goes to Abu al-As and he says, Abu al-As, take this to Zainab and tell her not to let this thing go again. Tell her to hold this so, so dearly to her because it belongs to my beloved Khadija. Khadija, Khadija, my wife Khadija. He was sitting with, after the death of Khadija, he was sitting with Aisha one day and then somebody knocked at the door and then he came out, Ali salatu wassalam. He came out rushing saying Khadija, Khadija, Khadija. This is after the death of Khadija, so many years later. He heard somebody knocking at the door. He came out, Ali Sattu Salam, Khadija, Khadija, Khadija. He opened the door and it was Hala, Hala bin to Khawailid. It was Hala, it was Khadija's sister. He smelled, he smelled the fragrance of Khadija from her sister who came to visit the Prophet Muhammad Ali Sattu Salam. Khadija, Khadija. He was so loyal, Ali Salatu Salam. Did not forget that love. Wala tansaw al fadla baynakum. Don't forget about the good that happened between you. Allah says, Don't forget about the good that was between you. Khadija, Khadija. He was with one, with the Sahaba, and then Aisha was there. And then he saw an old woman. And then he goes to her. And then he started talking to her. He takes away, he takes off his abaya. And then he puts it on her. And then he starts talking to her. And Aisha, she's watching. And then when the Prophet comes back, Aisha, she says, Who is that old woman, O Prophet of Allah? Who is that old woman that you've been talking to? You even took your own garment and gave it to her. Who was she, Ya Rasulullah? He says, she is an old friend of Khadija. She is an old friend of my wife, Khadija. We were talking about the time of Khadija. Her and I were talking about the time of Khadija. And then he calls Abu al-As and he says, Abu al-As, Halla asaltuk? Halla asaltuk? Oh, Abu al-As. I'd like to share with you something. Could you come? I'd like to talk to you as private. Abu al-As, Allah has ordered me to separate between a woman who's Muslim married to a man who's not Muslim. Oh, Abu al-As, would you... And look, he was a prisoner. He just released him. And now he's asking, Abu al-As, would you become a Muslim? He says, no. Then he says, Abu al-As, would you let my daughter go? Would you let her go? Would you divorce her, let her go? 
Abu al-As goes back to Medina. Zainab saw him. She was so happy. My husband, my husband. He says, no. No. You have to go. She says, go where? She, he says, we're divorced. You have to go back to your father. Your religion now has prohibited that I stay married to you. You have to go back to your dad. She says, then would you come with me? Would you become a Muslim and come with me? He says, no. I don't want people to say that he left the religion of his forefathers. She took Ali and she took Umama, her kids. And then she went to Medina. Six years later, a caravan came out from Mecca. Caravan came out from Mecca and that caravan was holding, came out from, for business. So it was holding some belongings of the elite of the people of Quraysh, of Mecca, the Meccans. And Abu al-As came out with that caravan. The Muslims were out. They found that caravan which in fact was carrying the belongings of the Muslims because when the Muslims migrated from Mecca to Medina, they left their belongings there. So they came out and then they put that caravan under siege. They attacked the caravan. Abu al-As ran away. Where did he run? Or where did he run? He ran to the closest town, Medina. To what home? At night before Fajr. Where did he go? He goes and he looks for the house of Zainab, his ex-wife. Zainab sees him. She opens the door. Oh, Abu al-As, Atayta Salima? Qala la, bal atayta hariba. Did you come as a Muslim? He says, no. I came, I just escaped. And he told her the story. And then she says, Marhaban bi ibn al-Am. Because they were cousins. She says, welcome, oh my cousin. Although you're not my husband, but you are the father of Ali and Umama. And you are my cousin. Welcome, welcome. And then she goes, before Fajr, as the Muslims prayed Fajr, the early morning prayer, after they finished the prayer, and then a loud voice came out from the masjid. Oh, people, Ajar to Abul As, Ajar to Abul As. I have given protection to Abul As. I have given protection to Abul As. The Prophet says, Do you guys hear what I'm hearing? They said, Yes. He knows it is Zainab. This is Zainab. Oh, people, he says, Wallahi, I don't know what happened. They told him the story. They said, My daughter, she's saying that now Abu al As, he is under her protection. Yeah, and when a Muslim gives a non Muslim protection, khalas, nobody can harm that person. So he says, would you allow all oh, people? Would you allow? They said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. As long as Zainab gave him protection, khalas, he's free to go. And he says, the Prophet says, would you return his money to him? Allah, look at the beauty of Islam. The beauty of forgiveness. Mercy of Islam. He says, the Prophet says, would you also give him his money back? His belongings back? They said, Ya Rasulullah, for Zainab, for the sake of Allah. Then Zainab, we will give him, we'll set him free and give him, it's our money, but we will give him back. He'll take it back. So he takes Zainab and then he says, Oh Zainab, he is not your husband. Honor him. Be kind to him. But he should not touch you. He should not touch you. He is not your husband. The Prophet goes to Abu al-As, Abu al-As, you're free to go. But would you want to become a Muslim? Abu al-As says, no. He takes his money back and then he goes to Medina. He goes back to Mecca and then he goes, Oh, people of Mecca, here's your money back. Did I give you back your money? Yes, you have. Do you guys owe me anything? They said, no. He says, now me, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, wa Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. 
Me, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad is the Prophet of Allah. And then he goes back to Medina. The same day. And then he goes to the Prophet Muhammad He says, Oh Rasulullah, I came now as a Muslim and I declare that there is no God but Allah and that you are Muhammad, the messenger of Allah. Oh Prophet, would you allow me to remarry Zainab? Would you allow me to remarry Zainab? So he takes him and then he goes to Zainab, the Prophet He knocks at the door, Zainab came out and then the Prophet says, Oh Zainab, here's Abu al-As. He's a Muslim now and he is asking if he can go back and remarry you. Oh Zainab, what do you say? Zainab, she lowered her gaze and she smiled. Means, yes, I agree. And then they remarried. And lived so happily. But a year later, Zainab passed away. Abu al-As used to cry so much that the Prophet would go to him, wipe his tears, and he would tell him, Hawan alayka ya Abu al-As, Hawan alayka ya Abu al-As, take it easy, oh Abu al-As, take it easy. Abu al-As would tell him, Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi, I feel no sweetness of this life after the death of Zainab. I don't feel this life no more. I don't feel this world no more. I don't feel the sweetness of this world no more after the passing away of my wife. Ya Rasulullah, I want to die too. Every time he goes, he takes his baby, Umama. He hugs her. It reminds him of Zainab. Hugs her so tight and cries. He never got remarried. A year later, Abu al-Az passes away as well. He couldn't take it. He was so sad. He wanted to join his wife in the heavens. In a nutshell, this is the story of Zainab and her husband Abul As. For me, it's an amazing love story. I feel the need one more time. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I feel the need for a hug. Can I get a hug, please? Can I get a hug? Come on. Just one. Just one. Uh, me, if I see you giving hugs, it's stuck if you're giving me a hug. So give a hug, give a hug to each other. Just give a hug, give a hug. Hug the person next to you. Hug your sheikh. Hug the person next to you, man. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know, I don't know. I'm just like that, man. You either love me or love me. I don't know. You have two choices. Either love me or love me. Pick one. So let's go back into the ingredients on how to improve our life or our marriage with our spouses. But first, ladies and gentlemen, I've got to share something with you. I read this book. Sisters, you know what? I read this book. You know what it is called? It's called Why Men Don't Listen. And Why Women Can't Read Maps. Why women cannot read maps. You know what? It's an amazing book. It's got nothing to do about women not reading maps or men not listening. It just talks about the psychological differences between men and women. Go and read it. Amazing book. The psychological differences. And I wish I had read that book before I got married. I read it like 20 years later. What? Have I been married for 20 years? Uh, no, 15. Well, I forgot. I don't know. But a long time. An amazing book. And I wish I had read it before. Here is how it says. You know, let me give you the example. The brain, man's brain versus women's brain. Okay? That, just, just watch me. Man's brain, women's brain. Man's brain is made up of boxes. 
One box called money. One box called uh, wife. One box called work. One box called children. One box called salah. Different boxes. So when a man wants to talk about money, he pulls the box called money, talks about money, and then he puts it back. When a man wants to talk about work, he pulls the box called work, he talks about work, and then he brings it back. Man cannot talk about two boxes at the same time. Man cannot talk about work and women or children at the same time. He does not know how to do that. And there is a very special box in every man's brain. Ladies, you better listen well. The very most amazing box that is beloved to every man, it's called the empty box. <laughs> it's got nothing in it. It is our favorite box. Sometimes when your husband is watching TV and he's doing, uh, he is not watching TV. He is into his empty box. Leave him alone. Have you seen two men going fishing together? Have you ever seen two men going fishing together? We do go fishing and we can stay two hours fishing without talking to one another. For two hours, when women see us, they say, you guys are having problem. We say, no, we got no problem. We are in our empty box. We enjoy it. We love it. Now, women boxes, women's brain. Women, they have the same boxes, but the boxes are all interconnected. <laughs> A woman, mashallah, she can talk about work. She can talk about children as cooking at the same time, watching TV and listening to you, her husband on the phone. She's listening to you as cooking and watching TV. And she can tell you much. Can't you see that sometimes when the sisters are talking, have you ever noticed? They all talk at the same time. And you just wonder, you say, Subhan al Khaliq. Praise to the one who created you. How can you talk? They can. We cannot. When a man, let me ask you a question. When a man drives a car and then he gets a phone call, there is a radio on. And then he gets a phone call. What is the first thing that the, the man would do? Turn the radio off. Automatic. Say with me, brothers. Automatic. Say. Automatic. We just drive as soon as the phone rings we have to turn off the radio and pick up the phone the wife says why did you turn off the radio <laughs> i was listening to that song i was listening to that qari you tell her i cannot talk and drive at the same time i can only do one thing at the same time she does not understand <laughs> because she's multitasked Allah, allah has given them that ability to multitask Another example, when women, they go to a washroom, toilet. Most women, when they go to the washroom, a washroom for them is like a lounge. What's a lounge? They go to talk. Most women sometimes build relationships with each other in washrooms. A woman will go to her sister, she says, sis, come with me. Where? We just go into the washroom. And then they go to the washroom together. How would you feel, buddy? You know, it's you, it's somebody from Somalia. If I tell you, hey, buddy, come with me to the washroom. <laughs> how, would, how would you feel, man? He's already mad. He's already upset. He's already, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. We men don't do that. We don't do that, man. We don't say, oh, buddy, walk with me to the washroom. We don't do but the sisters, they do that all the time. Ma, say, MashaAllah. MashaAllah. So you've got to understand these differences between men and women. When a wife, who's married here again? Who's married? 
when your wife says you tell her okay I'm going to see my friends and then she says fine fine in Norway means Wien Viet Viet so your wife says Viet does that mean Viet in Urdu she says acha TK TK does that mean TK what does it mean it means man if you go you're not gonna have fun tonight <laughs> you need to understand the psychological differences between men and women so let us start inshallah ta'ala with some quick ingredients on how to improve our life with one another husbands and wives number one ladies and gentlemen you've got to understand something very important the night of the wedding your wife or your life or your spouse with your wife with your spouse with your you know your your with your husband or wife starts in the first night of the wedding how do you start that night the prophet ali salatu salam he taught us how to start our first night all right so you're married all right come here buddy come here it's all right you're gonna have the privilege of being my wife today yes come just imagine okay i'm gonna teach you something maybe no other sheikh will teach you Second time, second time I love you man what can I say <laughs> all right so just you know this is the sunnah of the Prophet when you get married the first thing you do is you come you see your wife she's you know don't look at me like your wife is she's you know, <laughs> you know, all right <laughs> supposed to be shy right your wife supposed to be shy so she's shy so you come the first thing you do what do you do you put your hand right hand on her forehead just like this and then you recite the dua. That is the dua supplication. Allahumma inni asaluka khayraha wa khayra ma jabilta alayhi wa a'udhu bika min sharriha wa sharri ma jabilta alayhi. You know this dua? Memorize it, man. Very important. You can say it in English or in Nor or Norwegian or you know, but it's a dua. It's in the fortress of the Muslim, in the book called the fortress of the Muslim. You can find it there, inshallah ta'ala. Okay? So you say this. And then what do you do after that? Let me show you. You get a, a glass of water or milk. It's better if it's milk, right? You drink. <laughs> and then you drink. <laughs> love in the air. Halal way. Halal love. <laughs> and then you bring a date. Sunnah. I'm telling you sunnah. You bring a date. Give a date <laughs> and then you eat from the date and then you start your life with Turaka Turaka you go and you pray Turaka with her so you go behind me <laughs> and we pray Turaka and don't do like this man did <laughs> there's this guy he just got married and he says pray as if this is your last prayer <laughs> You're just starting your life with your wife. Pray this is your last prayer. What is? And you don't have to recite Al-Baqarah. Or you don't have to recite Al-Imran or Al-Nisa. You just call Allah Wahad. You know, very short. All right. And then after that, you talk. You talk with your wife. That's it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You start your life with the Sunnah of the Prophet. Imagine starting your life with Turaka. Don't you think Allah would put blessing in this marriage? Starting with Turaka with your, with your spouse. Starting with the Sunnah of the Prophet with your spouse. You may ask or you may say, Sheikh, I didn't know that. I'm married. I didn't know that. The train is gone now. Well... I don't know. Maybe you still have three more trains. I don't know. I didn't say that. Somebody said that. I didn't say that. But you can still do it, inshallah ta'ala. Go back and do it to your wife, bi'ithnillah. 
also my brothers and this is for the brothers understand the standard of living of your wife understand her standard of living for instance I'll give you an example when the Prophet Muhammad married Maria Maria the Coptic Maria she is the only wife who's not from the Arab Peninsula Maria was where was she from or she was from Egypt she used to live in Egypt the other was where from Arabia from Arabia from the you know the desert so when the Prophet married Maria where did she live she did not live with the Prophet in Medina or in the Masjid Nabawi where the Masjid where the house of the Prophet is now he chose a different house for her a different place for her out in the outskirts of Medina where the trees are the palm trees the green the lakes why because Maria came from an area known to have trees known to have you know greens and whatnot so the prophet understood her standard of living if your wife mashallah comes from a very you know high standard of living if you're the husband you can try to at least mimic that standard of living this is very important for the for, for the for the spouse if you can inshallah if you can uh, you know afford to uh, provide her with a similar standard of living number three another thing that will improve your relationship with your spouse is something called patience ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters patience sabr especially brothers and sisters ladies and gentlemen in the first year or two years of marriage you need that patience so much why because this is the time where you guys are getting to know one another before you used to sleep on the phone talking to her you, to, you know you would call her maybe every day talking to her on the phone for like six five seven hours as soon as you hang up you send her a text message I miss you <laughs> and after you get married what happens you still talk to her on the phone like that you know what happened to that frequency you stop calling why you need lots of patience in the beginning as you are learning about one another there was this sister who came to me once and she says sheikh i want divorce i said why i said my husband snores <laughs> i swear she says my husband snores i'm sick of his snoring i said sister come on uh, come on you snore you honey be patient be patient you know at some point inshallah you know you will love your husband snoring It'll be like a lullaby to put you to sleep. Sometime, you know, when you get used to it, you just, honey, honey, please, snow, snow, please. <laughs> but you have to be patient. Don't just, you know, for anything, I want divorce. There was a guy when I was in Dubai. <laughs> this Arab, subhanAllah, I don't know. You know, his wife came to us, she came to his, her father, Dad, I married an animal. <laughs> Every time there is a conflict or a problem, he bites me. <laughs> this guy is Hayawan, is an animal. So we came and then we said, we want to talk to this guy, what's wrong with you, man? Every time they said, go bite your wife, what's up with you? He says, I'm only doing what Allah told me to do in the Quran. <laughs> I said, excuse me? He says, yes, I'm following the law of Allah. Allah says to bite them in the Quran. He says, show me, show me that in the Quran. I want to go and bite my wife too. Show me. He says, the ayah says, وَاللَّاتِ تَخَافُونَ نُشُوزَهُنَّ فَعُضُّهُنَّ And those, those hafad will understand. You have to understand Arabic to be able to understand what I just said. وَاللَّاتِ تَخَافُونَ نُشُوزَهُنَّ فَعُضُّهُنَّ He misread it. Allah says the Quran and those that you fear rebellion from give them admonition talk to them in Arabic Allah says فَعِضُهُنَّ عِضُهُنَّ means give them admonition he read it فَعُضُهُنَّ in Arabic عُضُهُنَّ means bite them <laughs> he lost it I say wallahi man I think you are definitely a man what's wrong with you 
It is not fa'adduhunna. It is iduhunna. Give them admonition. Talk to them. So you need that patience, especially in the beginning of your marriage. Stubbornness. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, do not be stubborn because you know shaitan comes and this is what he wants. He wants you to separate from your spouse. Show him who's the man. Show her who's the man. Show him, show, you know, and the, the shaitan keeps on, you know, whispering and whatnot. Stubbornness kills, destroys marriage. Wallahi, I'm going to tell you something that also happened in Mecca, in the Haram. The Shaykh of Mecca of Al Haram, he changed his khutbah. When he heard this, he was giving a sermon. He changed his sermon when he heard this. When he heard that a husband divorced his wife in the haram during the tawaf, the circumambulation around the Kaaba. Why? What happened? He says to his wife, We went six times. She says, No, five. <laughs> he says, No, six. She says, There were Allahi five. I was counting. He says, I count two, it's six. She says, La, five. Six, five, you are divorced. <laughs> five, five, six, seven, yani, you're divorced. At the time of Abu Hanifa, one woman, one guy wanted to divorce his wife, you know, she was climbing the ladder, going up the ladder. He goes, if you go one step up, you're divorced. One step down, you're divorced. So how would you do this, huh? One step up, one step down. Yani, you are divorced. She's smart. She jumped. <laughs> Brothers, be careful, man. Not for anything. Talaq, talaq, talaq. So much that this Arab guy, also another crazy guy, he divorced five wives. Five. You may say, no, how can he? He can marry four. La, he divorced five wives. How did he do it? He had four wives, so something happened between the first one, he says, you're divorced. The second one says, well, you're strong, man, you're crazy, man, what's up? He says, you're divorced too. The third one says, Allah, you're crazy, well, uh, you divorced three. The fourth wife says, La hawala wala hawala. What, how, what's going with you? You are divorced four. The neighbor, she was listening. She says, what kind of neighbor are these guy? You're crazy, man. Divorce four wives in five minutes. He says, you are divorced if your husband approves. The husband says, I approve. He says, you're divorced. <laughs> Stubborn and kills marriage. Another thing that will improve life and relationship with your spouse Brothers and sisters, in a serious note, allocate time to sit with one another. Allocate some time. I know you're busy at work, you're busy at school, you're busy doing what you're doing, but you need to allocate some time to spend that time with your spouse. It's very important. Allocate time to go out and do things together. Go into outings together. Pray together. Fast together. Play together. This is all beautiful. When you do this with your spouse, the Prophet Muhammad says in Bukhari that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala smiles. And he smiles in a way that befits his majesty. I don't want you to imagine how Allah smiles. Allah smiles in a way that befits his majesty. The Prophet says, Inna Allah, Allah smiles, yabtasim, aw yadhak, yadhak. When a woman, she's waking up her husband to pray at night and the husband does not want to wake up and then she takes some water and then she splashes it with him like this. Yalla Habibi, yalla, yalla. Come on, honey, come on. Come on, come on, John. You know, the old though, John. Don't you say John? Yeah. Turkish? No, no, John in, in Urdu. But in Norway, how would you say, my love, Habibati? How you say in Norwegian? You don't have, you don't say it, huh? Huh? Shara. Shara. Okay, Shara. Wake up. Look at this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He smiles when He sees something like that happens. 
Have you ever woke up your wife or your husband to pray together Qiyam al-Layl? The Prophet used to do that. Never compare each other to one another. Never compare your husband with your brother or your father. Never compare your wife with your mother. My mother, she cooks like this. My mother walks like this. My mother talks like this. My mother cleans like this. And she goes, I did not marry your mother. I married you for God's sake. Don't do that, please. It destroys marriage when you compare your spouse to her husband or to your friend or whatnot. Never do that. Another thing that will improve love amongst you is something called warm greetings. What is warm greetings? The Prophet, whenever he used to come, he used to say, Assalamu alaikum. Kayfa halukum? Kayfa halukum? Kiya hal hai? How are you? Every time he would come, Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Warm greetings and very nice if you can couple those, those uh, uh, warm greetings with hugs and touches. Hugs and touches. Because the experts say, not me, the experts in psychology, they say that women have to be touched 30 times a day to feel secure. <laughs> Allahu A'lam. They say for a woman to feel secure, she's got to be touched 30 times a day. I don't know how it happens 30, but you know what? I tried to do it once with my wife. I said, well, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Not like that. Like maybe you come from work and then she's in the kitchen and then you go give her a hug. Uh, can I, one more time? <laughs> oh, watch, watch. I have to, I'm a visual guy. Remember I said yesterday I'm a visual guy. I have to show you things. I will show you something that I don't think any sheikh would teach you. How to touch your spouse. <laughs> so, uh, let's say you're cooking. Cook, cook, man. Cook, cook. So you come from work and then you go and then you do like this. Number one. Here's number one. You do like this. Right, here. right there. That's one touch. But don't make it like oh, like this. How are you? How is everything? How's your day? Something like that. Number one. Cook, 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 cook. Number two. You come from work or you're out and then she's also cooking again. So what do you do? I'm in this thing. So you come from work and then, and then right there she's cooking again. And then right, watch. Right here. Very important. And you talk, كيف حال هيك, how are you, how are you doing, how's your day? Things like that. Warm greetings with touches and hugs. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. May Allah bless you, may Allah bless you, thank you, may Allah bless you. Praise each other. Praise one another. Praise your spouse, mashallah, tabarakallah. Thank you. Praise each other. It's good. Uh, call him or her with his most beautiful names or her most beautiful name. You can give her nicknames, beautiful nicknames, like the Prophet used to call Aisha, Aish, Ayush, Humaira, Blondie, red, red cheeked. Give her beautiful names, honey. I don't know how you would say it in Norwegian, but any beautiful thing, honey, uh, vinegar, cream cheese, I don't know, you know, but give her, you know, if he likes to be called a man, call him my boss. If she likes to be called sugar, call her sugar. Shushu, fufu, anything is permissible between you and your wife. I'm telling you, you take whatever you want to take, and if you don't like something, don't take it. It's up to you. It is the Sunnah of the Prophet. It's up to you. 
pamper each other pamper each other in front of your kids it's okay you have to in front of your kids Naam, you teach your kids that it is okay to hold mama's hand it is okay to give mama's a hug yeah and you do that in front of the kids it's all right pampering your wife cherishing your wife cherishing your husband pampering your husband in front of your kids that's amali للأولاد. practical lesson for your children for your children say the million dollar world let me repeat say the million dollar word brothers what is the million dollar world you know it huh what is it are you married <laughs> he's not married let me talk to somebody who's married what's the one million dollar word it starts with I I I'll I'll it's not coming out I'll we men have a problem saying it I I love I love you <laughs> the Prophet used to tell Aisha in front of the Sahaba in front of his companies yeah Aisha Wallahi I love you Wallahi I love you a man came to him Abdullah ibn As ibn Amr ibn As who's the most beloved person to you Ya Rasulullah he says Aisha on the spot Aisha my wife and then he goes no 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 Ya Rasulullah from man the Prophet says her father <laughs> he thought he was gonna say me he says her father I love you say it it's all right say it brother say I love you can you say that to your spouses I know Somalis you have a problem with that <laughs> you have a problem with that well, Allah bless you. It's all right, Yashik. Even the Arabs sometimes they have a problem with that. We say it. Say it, inshallah ta'ala. Uhibbuki, ya habibati. Uhibbuki. Say that, inshallah. It's all right. You may even make it nice. You know, you know, Aisha, she used to tell the Prophet all the time. So if your wife comes and asks you all the time, do you love me? It's all right. Because Aisha, she used to ask the Prophet the same question all the time. Do you love me? And then the Prophet would tell her, I love you like the nut in a rope. Look at this Arabi example. Like the nut in a rope. You understand? A nut in a rope. And then she goes, and she, from time to time she asks him, Oh Prophet of Allah, how's that nut? The Prophet would say, very tight. <laughs> very tight. She goes again, how's the night? The night, very tight. Yeah, and my love for you, it's still strong. As the nut in the rope. You may tell her, I think your dad was a, is a terrorist. She says, excuse me? She says, yeah, because you're a bomb. <laughs> ah. You're a bomb. How's that one, huh? Break the routine. Another thing that will increase love amongst you. Break the routine. Every day the same thing, same thing, same thing. Surprise each other. Break the routine. Yani from time to time, it's all right. Dress up for your husband, sisters. Look good for your husbands. Dress up for your spouses. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he was brushing his hair one day, getting ready to meet his wife. The Sahaba, they went to him. You got to give us evidence from the Quran that you have to look nice for your wife. He says, yes, I do have the evidence from the Quran that I have to look nice for my wife. As Allah says, as you like to see them beautiful, they like to see you beautiful. Women have the same right as that of man. If I like to see my wife nice, good looking, she likes to see me good looking as well. So I'm preparing myself looking nice for my wife. Is there anything wrong with that brothers? To look nice for your wives, to dress up for your wives. Is there something wrong with that? 
Sisters, why don't you dress up for your husband? Sometimes, you know, I get some complaints from some husbands, really, and this is the truth. As I'm a marriage officer, I'm a licensed marriage officer from Canada, and I get people complaining, I hear all kinds of complaints. Yes, yeah, Sheikh, I go to work and I see things happening and whatnot. I go home, my wife with an abaya. I see abaya outside, I go home, full abaya at home as well. Yes, yeah, Sheikh, yes, yeah, Sheikh, help me, Sheikh, help me. And I tell the sisters, go to La Senza Girl. Go to La Vion Rose. Go to, I don't know if you have them here in Norway. No, you don't have them. Victoria's Secret. <laughs> go to those places, dress up for your husbands. Halalan tayyiban mubarakan fi. It's all halal because it is for your husband. Wallahi, I'm serious. And then the husbands will come and complain. And then divorce happens because khalas, what happened? Break that routine. Surprise your husband one day. Surprise your wife one day. You call on the phone. Honey, pack up your bags. What did I do? Why are you sending me home? You say, no. I've got a couple tickets. We're going for Umrah together. Oh. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Surprise each other. Pamper each other. Break that routine. Insha'Allah Ta'ala. How about having fun with each other? Can you raise your wife, your spouse? The Prophet used to do that. He would raise Aisha. He says, Aisha, she says, he raised me and then I won because she was young. She raised him and then she won. She says, فَأَطْعَمَنِي لَحْمًا أُسْبُوعًا she, said, he, she says, he fed me meat for one week. He fed me meat for one week. And then we came and we raced and then he won. I was heavy. I couldn't run. He says, he won. And then he says, oh Aisha, this for that. With even. You won, I won. He's having fun. Don't tell me, ah, I'm too old, Sheikh. Yeah, you better than Rasulullah. Break that routine, Akhi. It's all right to have fun with your spouse. Halal fun, yeah, Sheikh. Halal fun. InshaAllah Ta'ala. Participate in the chores at home. It's all right. Some husbands, they think they are the ministers of finance. They only pay, pay the bills and the expenses. It's all right to help at home like the Prophet he would always, you know, try to kana fi khidmati ahlihi. When Aisha, she was asked, how's Rasulullah? He'd say, kana fi khidmati ahlihi. He was in the service of his wife, working at home, helping at home. So you can help with the chores at home, inshallah ta'ala. There's nothing wrong with that. Be, you know, kind words, kind words. Sadaqa, as the Prophet says, ibtisama, sadaqa, nice smiles, sadaqa, charity. If you have no money to give us charity, how about a smile in the face of your spouse, huh? How about a smile in the face of your, of your brother? It's charity. You don't want to smile, man. I'm telling you, a smile in the face of your brother is charity. Cheap man. Wallahi, free, 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 Sheikh, free. Show me that, those teeth. Thank you. A smile in the face of your spouse is charity. Kind words are charity. Be honest, ladies and gentlemen, with one another. Be honest with your spouse. Pay attention. Brothers, this is for you. Pay attention to the mood of your wife, especially when she's going through her menses. Very, very important. Pay attention to their mood. Sometimes they may act weird. It's all right. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them not to pray when they're going to their menses. So sometimes they, have, they go to these psychological, you know, hormone changes. So you've got to understand. You've got to understand. So pay attention to those, uh, to those differences. Brothers, also this is for you. Give your wife time out. You know what a time out is? Like when you give your kid, your kid and you tell him, go time out. You tell your kid, time out, go to your room, time out. Don't you guys do that here in Norway? Yes, I know. I'm sure you do. Give that to your wife. You say, time out. Which means, give her a break, man. If you got kids, take your kids out. And then, give some time out for your wife to recharge. She needs that time to recharge. Like you need that time to recharge as well. You go out, spend time with your friends. She needs that time to recharge as well. Give her some break. 
apologize brothers and sisters apologize apologize when you make a mistake there's nothing wrong about saying i'm sorry i'm really sorry i didn't mean that i didn't mean to hurt you i'm really sorry if i said something wrong if i have hurt your feelings it's okay to say i'm sorry apologize when you make mistakes don't keep looking for each other's mistakes don't just keep looking at each other's mistakes look at the good time the good the good qualities versus only looking at the bad side look at the good side and last but not least you brothers you have to understand that you are financially responsible to provide for your wives even if they work even if they've got money you in front of Allah you are financially responsible to provide for your spouse this is your obligation I know today and I can't go on and on but the time is up I know that maybe today all the flower shops would be busy you guys gonna go to the flower shops and buy a flower and then go to your wives and then with some chocolates and roses but you know what the Prophet says the Prophet says the best deeds in the sight of Allah are those, de those deeds that are continuous even if they are trivial but the best deeds in the sight of Allah are those deeds that are continuous today you buy a flower and then the next time she sees the flower is in 10 years not good and don't do like this guy my brothers who bought some flowers for his wife and then she came and says oh mashallah hasni you remembered me he says no they were on sale <laughs> that was not good who's that they were on sale la contemplate the seerah of the prophet muhammad there are books that talk about the seerah of the prophet the ways of the prophet and how he used to treat his wife go and read those those books go and read this. it's in bukhari as well how the prophet used to take a bath from the same vessel with aisha from the same vessel from the same bath they would take bath together and you know what happens Aisha she would take some water and then she would splash the Prophet Ali and then the Prophet would splash water back at her so they play with water just like pillow fight have you ever done pillow fight with your wife pillow fight the, the Prophet did that with Aisha water fight splash water water back back in her what's wrong with that you tell me sisters brothers what is wrong with that is there anything wrong with that he would go like I said race with her and then one day she felt jealous why because Hafsa sent some food to her house and then she broke the tray in front of the Prophet in front of the Sahaba the companions she was jealous she got jealous it's all right brothers it is them subhanallah they felt jealous it's all right she broke the tray the Prophet what did he do he says oh Aisha Ah, uh, come on. He didn't say come on, but you know. <laughs> oh, Aisha, tabakun bi tabak, wa taamun bi taam. Oh, Aisha, she gave us a tray. You have to give her a tray too. She gave us some food. You have to give her food too. And then he goes to the Sahaba, and then he says, "Your mother has become jealous. Your mother has become jealous. Who is this? Rasulullah. She's going to her menses. The last one. Last one. I'm last. I'm done." She goes, she's going to her menses. Sit down, please. Sit down. She goes to her menses. And then the prophet, and then she goes, listen to this. This is what happened when she came to him and she's telling him, Ya Rasulullah, tell me about the oh, most, the, 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 the toughest hardship that you had, Ya Rasulullah. Brothers, please, please concentrate because the people are watching here. She came and she says, Ya Rasulullah, tell me about the hardest hardship you've ever had in your life the hardest time you had and then he started telling her about about when he went to Taif when people threw rocks at him he was bleeding and he said to salam and then he goes and she's going to her menses huh he goes he get her a cup of milk and then he he goes and he says Aisha please drink she says Ya Rasulullah no I want you to drink first and then he goes no Aisha please I'd like you to drink first so she drank Bismillah and then the Prophet took the same cup and then he turned it from exactly the same spot that she drank from. 
and then he drank from it too. There's no germ sharing or... It's his wife. He gets a piece of meat. He tells Aisha, have a bite. She says, Ya Rasulallah, no, please, you have first. She says, no, 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 you have first. And then she has a piece of, like a morsel of meat. And then he takes that meat from the same spot that she had that bite from. And then he had another bite. And then when they finish eating, I'm sorry to say this, but this is in Bukhari. I'm sorry to say, but again, it's, in, it's a sunnah. He takes her hand and then he... After they finished food. Don't you guys know when you eat with your hand, those who eat with their hands, they understand. You eat with your hand and then you lick your fingers. The Prophet took her hand and he licked her fingers. Ya Salam. Say, Ya Salam. Aww. What a beautiful... This is love. This is the art of love. Who's teaching me this? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower your lives with flowers, with blessings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your homes as the home of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa May Allah make your homes as the home of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa May Allah bless you with pious, righteous spouses that will be your spouses not only in this life but also your spouses in the hereafter in Jannah insha'Allah ta'ala. Azakum Allah khair. Thank you for your attention. May Allah bless you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.